evening. This is Monday, October 6, 29 days until the 2008 presidential election. The same candidate whose campaign manager on September 1st at the Republican National Convention declared this election is not about the issues. The same candidate who on September 15th, the first time the Dow crashed, declared that the fundamentals of our economy are strong. The same candidate who on September 24th pretended to suspend his campaign so he could return to Washington to deal with bailout negotiations. That same candidate now plans to ignore the economy entirely while attacking his opponent with every bit of sleaze that he can sling. Our fifth story in the countdown, a top aide to Senator John McCain telling the New York Daily News, quote, we have no choice. If we keep talking about the economic crisis, we're going to lose. In other words, McCain first. Country, not so much. The McCain-Palin campaign going all negative all the time in the wake of poll numbers that show support for the Republican ticket continuing to go all south all the time. Obama leading 49-43 nationally in the new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll out this evening. Six in ten of those voters surveyed saying the economy is the key issue in this election. No other issue coming close. Senator Obama also seen as better able to improve the economy. Faced with numbers like these, the McCain campaign inclined to change the subject, turning to its self-described hockey mom with the demeanor of a pit bull, vice presidential candidate Palin. On Saturday, the Alaska governor trotting the campaign's new yet old attack out, dipping from the shallow well of Senator Obama living in the same neighborhood and once having served on a charity board with William Ayers, a one-time weather underground figure. One of his earliest supporters is a man who, according to the New York Times, was a domestic terrorist and part of a group, part of a group that, quote, launched a campaign of bombings that would target the Pentagon and the U.S. Capitol. Our opponent is someone who sees America as imperfect enough to pal around with terrorists who targeted their own country. Governor Palin had actually read the New York Times article, as she claims she has. Perhaps she would have learned that the newspaper reported of Senator Obama and Mr. Ayers, quote, the two men do not appear to have been close, nor has Mr. Obama ever expressed sympathy for the radical views and actions of Mr. Ayers, whom he has called somebody who engaged in detestable acts 40 years ago when I was eight. As for attempts by the Democrat to call out his opponent on his smears and lies, Senator McCain lying about the lying while declaring Senator Obama guilty by location at the same time. Let me reply in the plainest terms that I know. I don't need lessons about telling the truth to the American people. And were I ever to need any improvement in that regard, I probably wouldn't seek advice from a Chicago politician. Ask almost anybody that help you out, pal. As we mentioned, a McCain aide explaining to the New York Daily News, quote, if we keep talking about the economic crisis, we're going to lose. Another telling the Washington Post, we are looking forward to turning a page on this financial crisis. The Dow Jones had other ideas. It lost another 370 points today. Nice job sticking the pages together. Senator Obama, meanwhile, reminding the unnamed aides today that most voters do not have the luxury of just moving on. I've got news for the McCain campaign. The American people are losing right now. They're losing their jobs. They're losing their health care. Uh, they're losing their homes. They're losing their savings. I cannot imagine anything more important to talk about than the economic crisis. And the notion that we would want to brush that aside uh, and engage in uh, the usual uh, political shenanigans and uh, smear tactics that uh, have come to characterize too many political campaigns, I think, uh, is not what the American people are looking for. And Senator Obama's campaign leaving the last word on the McCain campaign's latest smear tactics and negative attack ads to Senator McCain from a new web ad from the Democratic Party. Uh, I, I just have to rely on the good judgment of the voters not to buy into this, these negative attack ads. Sooner or later, people are going to figure out that if all you run is negative attack ads, you don't have much of a vision for the future or you're not ready to articulate it. On that note, time, in to, uh, time now to call in our own Richard Wolf, also, of course, Senior White House Correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Richard, good evening. Good evening, Keith. Uh, as we heard in the opening of the show, at, at the uh, Palin rally today in Florida, Senator Obama referred to, during an introduction by a local sheriff, which is another story probably by itself, by his full name, Barack Hussein Obama. Uh, Governor Palin herself saying, in addition to the heirs charge, that the heels are on and the gloves come off. And at a McCain rally, uh, Senator McCain was asking who was the real Barack Obama, a member of the crowd replying, terrorist. 
whether by uh, association, by location, by middle name, is there any doubt that the McCain campaign is making a coordinated attempt right now to paint Senator Obama as a terrorist or a terrorist sympathizer? Well, first off, on middle names, uh, John Sidney McCain III ought to know how awkward these middle names can be, especially when you're trying to connect with regular folks. Uh, but when it comes to terrorists and the terrorist link, yes, they're obviously trying to make it explicit. They have done this before uh, in terms of the McCain campaign. Just a few weeks ago, they uh, suggested that Obama was Hamas's preferred candidate in this election. And, and that was a very explicit link and, and frankly, didn't carry much traction there either. And the problem now at this late stage in this campaign is that voters have got their own impressions of who this Democratic candidate is. They've watched the debates, they've watched the conventions, tens of millions of people have an impression of him, which is very different from the sort of scary candidate caricature that their McCain folks are trying to present. So there's, there's, a, there's a dissonance there between what they're talking about and what people are seeing. And speaking of dissonance, can a presidential campaign really declare and do so on the day when the Dow had at one point dropped 800 points that it's just not going to discuss the economy any, anymore and have any credibility anymore. I mean, 12 days ago, this man pretended he was suspending his campaign because the economic crisis was so serious. Now it's not going to come up for the next 29 days. Yeah, look, it, when 59% when of the country says that the economy is the most important thing, you have to talk about the economy. The problem is that they had a big moment of opportunity, a big window to talk about the economy, and they blew it on the gamble of suspending the campaign and trying to resolve the bailout discussions. When that didn't work, you've got to try and get people's attention back to the economy, not onto another subject. And, and, you know, to be fair, McCain did talk about the economy today. He actually tried to suggest that Obama had suggested that subprime loans were a good idea. It was a, a snippet of a quote which didn't relate to what Obama was really talking about. But, you know, unless they make their attacks connect with the economy, none of this stuff is going to matter. They have to raise questions about how Obama would handle the economy, not about who he befriended or didn't befriend many years ago in Chicago. And about that, in addition to the DNC ad, the Obama campaign put out a 13-minute documentary on the web that, that charted Senator McCain's role in the Keating Five scandal. And this is the part of this that I really don't understand from any angle. Whatever McCain can accuse Obama of, even with the thinnest of evidence, there seems to be something far worse and something also far more easily understood in the McCain closet. Why go there if going there is going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt the other guy? Well, I guess one argument would be that they thought the Keating Five uh, issue was somehow neutralized because McCain has spoken extensively about it. Of course, it, he spoke extensively about it a long time ago, so the Obama folks thinks there's a whole group of people who can be re-educated about the subject. But uh, you do raise an interesting question about thinking forward to the next step. We saw the same pattern with the whole pseudo-suspension of the campaign. If you think ahead, you recognize that you're going to end up owning the bailout problem, and they're just not thinking ahead at this stage. Richard Wolf of Newsweek and MSNBC, uh, great thanks for your thinking ahead here.